left or right? Hey everyone, it's Garrison here and welcome back to the channel and today I'm super duper excited because I'll be doing my first listen slash full on album review to La Seraphim's first studio album titled Unforgiven. Now man oh man, we cannot forget about their title track Unforgiven. In fact, you know, I, I, of course I can't forget it. I'm filming this first listen on the day of and in the morning, I checked out the music video tied along to Unforgiven, which by the way, exceeded my expectations and then some more and they did not disappoint at all, I gotta say. Everything was so well considered. And what do you mean by that, Garrison? Everything was so well considered. The details. Everything. The details working hand in hand together from the concept, the intentions, the purpose coming through in the song, the imagery being shown throughout the entirety of the music video, and the iconic scenes that we were blessed with by each and every single member showcasing their own colors and presences, and also together as a whole, as a group, coming through, channeling their inner villains and being hey we're being carefree but also in a careless kind of manner i want to emphasize that a lot being carefree right carefree as in not caring what others view them believe about them think about them perceive about them at the end of the day because they're staying true to themselves and going on their own ways and i think that's not only great for la seraphim as a whole and the industry but i would say reminding our daily lives in this cruel cold world i've got to say just caring less you know and doing and focusing on the process as we go throughout life but if anything i've learned from la seraphim not only their title tracks hit their b-sides as well and after that highlight medley lot of promising b-sides specifically that stood out to me the most was no return into the unknown of course of uh, their fan song between you me and the lamp post now coming into fruition as fear not and then in parentheses between you me and the lamp post i was talking about flash forward a song that could totally suit for the upcoming new season of lenny verse but hey everyone enough talk Let's just dive into this first listen now. All right, so the first track we have here is titled Burn the Bridge. Now, guys, I have been anticipating this intro track as we always should do together. I've got to say after the highlight medley, it made me wonder how it's going to go comparably to the other intro tracks they have dropped for their respective albums. But for Burn the Bridge here, I didn't want to skip it because keep in mind for those who are not familiar with my album reviews, I never want to skip intro tracks because I feel like they're a way to set the tone for any respective album or in a way can set up the title tracks so perfectly for performances as well. But another thing, I got to give credit where credit is due and I'm seeing score and megatone all over the album except for one track if i'm not mistaken uh here yeah except for one track which was flash uh forward which is flash uh forward but score and megatone if you're not familiar with them coming from the collective of 13 with the likes of eden and score and megatone have shown so much range whether we're talking about one of my favorite songs by k will and his ballad called hello autumn Osa Lemio, of course, from Aza One. We're talking about Ave Maria, one of my favorite B-sides from, of course, G-Friend and Burn It, one of my favorite title tracks by Golden Child. And if there's something very recognizable when it comes to score and megatone, what they do greatly is come through with excellent and sometimes explosive production in terms of i've got to say the percussion work right it's very how should i say this it's very dynamic it's very dynamic and 
oftentimes you do hear a bass guitar add in the works and uh, what we heard in the title track a bass guitar so i'm not going to be surprised we get a bass guitar and burn the bridge here but let me see how this goes i'm sure there's going to be dialogue in this one as well but let's go with the beating of the heart and the strumming of the guitar with Japanese, yeah. Either give up or give in. Oh, Zhua with Eng the English. But Yunjin with Korean. I wish for what is forbidden to me. All oh, that percussion work. A closed door. Door locked shut. Another door, slightly ajar. Slightly ajar, yeah. Ooh, very atmospheric with it, this intro track. Manche. I'm never going back. I'm never going back by Chewan. Oh, there's a churning of the guitar here. Alongside the skittering of the hi-hats. We'll burn it all. Oh, wow! This song is so immersive. It really provides a cinematic feel. Whoa. Done in this chanting kind of manner. There are some lines of dialogue that I really want to point out and pause and highlight within this intro track, which, by the way, yet again cannot be necessarily considered just an intro track. It's an experience. It can be done as a full pledged song, I've got to uh, say. Now, what I noticed dialogue wise comparably from the past before this time we got a little bit you know more korean from yunjin we got juha coming through with a good amount of english in the dialogue but also i've got to uh say chewon chewon had a significant uh part in this as uh well i think i enjoyed the whole bit of uh this with this intro track i've got to say and comparably to the previous ones as well notice how more atmospheric this is with it i'm talking about multitudes of different samplings the beating of the hearts right it's there's some other sections that i'm not the process more or moments i should say not necessarily uh sections but also the skittering of the hi-hat, how the percussion's done. This is what I'm saying. They're either going to come through with something explosive when it comes to the percussion work or something very dynamic and very prominent with it. Something that's going to really stick and complement whoever's behind the track. In this case, La Seraphim. And I think it really connects to their title track. The strumming of the guitar that we were uh, hearing we got um, even that bass guitar, I believe, as uh, well. The churning uh, of it as uh, well. So let me actually bring it up here yet again. And we're going to cover more of this because it's definitely more atmospheric from the previous ones. The one, the other ones could feel like more Vogue, Runway-esque, you know, uh, kind of feel to it. That heartbeat pumping. 
The darkness drives me into a corner and forces me to choose either give up or give in, right? And I love how I honestly I, I want to I want to hear her uh, narrate something in the future in Japanese. I just love how she has this storytelling voice. In fact, the rest of the members have a storytelling voice as well, right? And the fact that they're doing it. For them themselves as a group is just something beautiful, right? Yeah, I was not mistaken. There is a little bit of droplets of water that can be heard in terms of the sampling. This is what I mean by it being very atmospheric. Either give up or give in. The ticking and tacking, the percussion work in the back. My answer, I wish for what is forbidden to me. Mm -hmm. Chime work, some sort of percussion work there. A closed door. And as the song progresses, or, you know, I'm mistaking this as a song, it's an intro track, but let's just call this an experience more so an immersive experience as this immersive experience progresses the skittering of the hi-hats get more intense get slowly churn and really become more prominent in the forefront notice this a door locked shut another door slightly ajar so like they're given a choice right and then there's this emphasis about the door i open them all and like, screw it, I open it all. I open all those doors, which can be perceived as opportunities. The pathway, even though it can be unknown, I'm willing to go through those doorways, right? And in life, if you think about it, there's different twists and turns. You're never going to get something linear, right? You're going to have your ups and downs. And now I'm getting that connection <laughs> from Unforgiven to unknown which is quite possibly one of the wordings like the word or unknown itself being the next title track of course for the next comeback which was teased at the cgv um show and all Let's go beyond together. I love the passion too. It's very done wholeheartedly with these lines, I've got to say. This one, uh, this line here by Kura really wants me to hear her narrate uh, something or do a, a voiceover um, with her Japanese and all. It's beautiful. Unche too. Let's go a far away land. Sounds like the crashing of waves or something, a ship on a stormy day. That's that churning of the guitar that I was talking about. We're, we'll burn it all and it'll light our way. I love it. I love it. We don't have to be given, forgiven. We are unforgiven. This stood out to me the most. There's a lot of the emphasize, emphasis here, obviously. Uh, and if you think about the doorways, you think about society, you think about the general public when it comes to the K-pop scene. Oh, how things should be, be done. How things are being uh, judged and not, you know, well considered. And people are keyboard warriors. You get my rant and the gist of it and all. But hey, we, we don't have to be forgiven. We are unforgiven. We are unforgiven because we don't care. We're going on our own way. We're making our own path. Doing our th own thing. Being our own selves. And I love the, oh, this chant. It 
it's almost like rallying everyone together for some war or something kind of chant. So good, everyone. I'm gonna have to check out the. I believe there's um some sort of uh performance uh to this, and all just gonna do it as a whole for all of their performances from their, of course, showcase slash comeback show, of course. But aside from that, let's just get into the next track now. So this next track is titled No Return in parentheses into the unknown. It just seems like more and more as we dive into this album, this is gonna be a cohesive first studio album just like Anti-Fragile. I'm gonna have to find out for myself, but I'm sure I'm gonna be spot on with it when it comes to it being very cohesive. I'm seeing familiar names though, the likes of Charlie Tapp, Daniel Obi Klein especially, they have worked hand in hand together with the likes of Red Velvet. We're talking about Perfect 10. We're talking about Automatic. Daniel Obi Klein has worked with Kim Lip and her song Eclipse. Sweet Crazy Love by Odd Eye Circle Luna. We got Young Chance in the mix too. I've recently covered Young Chance in Nmix's album for Password, a very fun song, I've got to say. And even the likes of Casio. Pia has worked with Shiny on You and I. A lot of prominent artists and idols out there, I've got to say. And even No Celestial by La Seraphim. So um, I'm getting some weird hunches, but also I'm getting uh, the feeling that I'm going to sense a lot of those influences by everyone working behind the scenes on this particular song. So let me bring up the song here right away and let's go. Ooh. Love the bass line with Chewan here. Cool heavy drums. I ain't gonna fake it. Okay. Ooh. Really love the percussion and drum kit work. It's very hollow yet epic. Okay, what a chorus. There's a lot of that disco influence on the pop punk beat, I've got to say. Great trumpet work. Low key. <laughs> Ooh, saxophone too. Juha. A known face. Mmm. The energy, I love the positive energy. Very uplifting. Quite upbeat this song is with the tempo. Here we are, here we are, yeah. <laughs> I love how this song is very shining and shimmering with the brass work, especially. Man, we got some trombone, trumpet work, saxophone there. Hey! It's so good, this song. Like, the positivity is overwhelming. And yet, 
I love the straightforward message that's keeping this album very consistent with it. Low key, low key. Has that sing alongable factor to it. And then assumingly that's the end of the song because I don't Yeah, I'm not get Yeah, I'm not getting into the weird uh music at the end of these lyric videos. I'm uh, I'm sorry. I'm going to try my very best to pause it in the right moments from here on out as I always do for my album reviews these days, but what a way, you know, to really continuing it from Unforgiven, keep in mind, because the way I view it right now so far, how it's laid out, because keep in mind, I always say this at the end of album reviews, but I just can't help myself to say this already feels so cohesive with it, right? With the intro track, Burn the Bridge, then Unforgiven featuring Nal Rogers, and then the follow up of No Return into the Unknown, which is more uplifting, bright with it, especially with the brass work and horns I've got to say, which is very clear and distinct, by the way. As someone who did band in high school with a little bit of a musical background, a little bit of tad a bit music theory and all, it doesn't sound like anything is necessarily being digitally done. I exactly feel the same way when it comes to their title track. Notice how the title track, I can hone in, and I'm like, wow, this is like... Not just any woodwind, I could sense as it being some sort of ocarina or type of instrument. In fact, let's try to search it up here. Um, Le Seraphim, no return. Because what Genius does is uh, not only showcasing the lyrics, sure you have the romanized uh, one, but at the same time it helps in a way to see what instruments are being done by the people behind the scenes, keep in mind everyone. And I can, first of all, before we get to it, I can really sense that that saxophone as someone who played the tenor sax back in high school and played in jazz band, trombone work, trumpet work, horns, all of those that I can hear distinctive, uh, Lee, and I'm not going to be surprised if there's even more um, instruments being done. So the, everyone behind the scenes, yeah, Young Chance. Yep. Yeah. Trombone. On the trombone, we got Wendell, Kelly. We got multiple. We got three saxophonists in the back here. The drums were done by Score and Megatone. Yes, we got that guitar work. I told you Score and Megatone are very well known for their bass guitar work. We got the trumpets as uh, well. So sure, maybe some things being digitally done and all in the post-production of things. But I love how all these instruments are live and done in, in are just live, yeah, pretty uh, much. And in the forefront, I've got to say, wow, that is something to really think about when it comes to La Seraphim's music from here on out. Um, in the studio, Live instrumentation, um, it, it makes a huge difference in my humblest opinion when you're enjoying uh, music. And at times it can make things very lively like this song does. No return into the unknown, I've got to say. And just that instrumental break with the brass work made things very, very fun before they wrapped it up. I, th I believe with the final uh, chorus and just the outro with the post chorus. So let me bring up the lyrics here yet again from the beginning, and we're going to dive into it right away. Gotta point out my favorite moments. Gotta process other moments in this song that I feel like need more time with me to understand, I've got to say. And lyrics that we got to point out, especially verse 2. Oh, that bass guitar, and I love these like epic timpani kind of uh, drums, very heavy with it, not too punchy with it, more so hollowed out. We got that hey vocal sampling right there. Hey! Oh, 
Oh, that is so satisfying, am I right? I ain't gonna fake it. That emphasis on fake it by Kajua, uh, by Juha, is really, really memorable, I've got to say. I ain't gonna fake it. Now it's impossible to go back to my past life. And that's the truth, you know, going into the unknown journeying in life, which is an emphasis in this song. And you think about La Seraphim journeying along their lives and as a group as a whole and in their careers and all and making such an impact so early on in their careers I've got to say bit of that tambourine clinging and clanging work of that percussion like come on oh. and Jay really shines in the song too Let it go, let it See what I'm saying? Here we are, here we are. Yes, I do, because right now I'm a little bit crazy. So, like, be, being more so in the moment, not being in the past, moving on with things in life. But also, sure, I'm crazy, I'm giddy, I'm witty with it. Well, let's just enjoy this journey that's calling us. Key low key low key. Low key low key low key. Oh my goodness, I am getting just so uh, uh, giddy and like witty like La Seraphim is just with this brass work here. Notice this. Do, 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 do. All that saxophone. Ooh, as a person who played saxophone, I have a huge amount of appreciation for this song. Verse 2. Kicking off with Zhuha. Literally hands down my favorite section in this song. Verse 2, everyone. I can't be the only one, right? Verse 2. I got no invitation. It's okay. The journey is just like that. Let's all smile. <laughs> I feel like in a way it tackles about like the journey, the journey that we take. Sure, we're not invited to do and take that kind of path and routes or invited to do things. But hey, journeys like uh, that, let's just continue and go along our ways. Let's make the best out of it. And then Unche, an unfamiliar unknown phase, a confusing way. So can you be my map, be my map now? Of course, there can be lost in translation with color-coded lyrics and, of course, color-coded things being wrong. But I love this this cute little line by Unche, I gotta say. Man, I love that. Ah, I feel like it's a chord on the keyboard being uh there. Oh yeah, for sure. Just being digitally done in the back there. Here we are, here we are. There's a sing alongable factor to it. It's Upon first listen, you can just sing along as it goes uh, by, and it's so memorable. The chorus is a huge integral part in the song because we get hit with the chorus a lot in the song, believe it or not. There is no bridge, pretty much, in this song. So it's very effective in that kind of way. Very earwormy. There's a good amount of ear candy when it comes to the percussion work. Okay, I'm just waiting for the brass, you know, all out solo instrumental break in this because it's so good. I love that trumpet work and the trombone work, the slides, the husky saxophone. Do 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 do. Do, 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 do. It's 
some brass work. Or the horns, I should say. Here we go. Quite the playful, quirky song all in all. And like I said earlier, on this pop punk beat with some disco influences, I've got to say. Pop disco. Low key, low key, low key. I'm not a low key, low key, low key. I'm not low key, low key, low. And ends it on that note from Yunjin. Very fitting with Yunjin there at the end to wrap it up, everyone. What a song. Definitely a song that I can keep on repeat. And it's going to be very fitting for the summertime and beyond the matter of fact. But hey, let's just dive into the next B-side now. So this next B-side is titled Eve, Psyche, and the Bluebeard's Wife. It's a strange, you know, titling upon first reading it as a whole. But the more you look into it, Adam and Eve, Psyche, Bluebeard's uh, wife. Now, I'm not too familiar of the French story with Bluebeard. But what I'm getting here, thanks to Adam and Eve, forbidden fruit and such, suffering the consequences and what's in common, all women in these stories that suffer the consequences, assumingly, but most importantly, disobeying the rules and what is being conformed um, and set by society, not being conformed, you know, to the, the rules and the standard uh, per se. So it makes me wonder how the lyricism is going to go. I'm seeing Lee Hyung Suk by PMP, that collective in the works. PMP, that collective has worked with Le Seraphim in the past before, but Lee Hyung Suk, of course, has worked on the likes of Impurities, of course, Road B, Nonstop, and Icarus, both of their title tracks. Those songs are gems, by the way. But let me bring up the song here, and let's see how this plays out. Oh, this is definitely Yun Jin. Mess in distress. Mmm. Fearless, say yes. Ooh. Love that hi-hat work. I love the attitude in this. It'll be okay. It's not okay. I will get to decide that kind of things, yeah. You'll see what's forbidden. Chaewon, she's popping off. Very upbeat this song is. Ooh, I could imagine some form of tutting or cool choreo tied along to this. Cutting or whacking, but I get the purpose in this song for sure. Be more like a doll. Hide it. Hide all things, all motions. Wow. This song cuts deep. I'm not a doll. Don't look at me. That bass, it goes hard. It takes dips. The boom 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 delivery is so satisfying. I wish for what's forbidden. So, not wanting to follow rules. More so, society's beliefs and values. Bridge. Padding of the drums. Percussion is really satisfying too. 
boom, boom, boom. <laughs> There's that adrenaline with the boom, boom, boom that I like to it. <sighs> Tell him. Okay. Now, the lyrics really open it up even more, okay? Sure, all those stories suffered consequences and used in a way to storytell and be like, hey, um, you shouldn't be doing this, you shouldn't be doing this, sort of the slap on the hand kind of uh, action that we learn throughout life as we grow throughout life and go through our experiences and the journeys that we take in our lives. But if anything I learned from uh, this, it's like, who cares? We're going to not, we're going to take what's forbidden and continue doing our own uh, uh, thing and not conforming to society's beliefs, more specifically the K-pop industry. Oh, be a doll. Hold in your emotions. Don't, you know, react to certain things. Don't cry to certain things. Don't be happy about certain things if you think about like award shows and like a lot of times over the years a lot of groups just you know not reacted they're just very they're just they're they're sitting sitting like a stick and because there is the consequences of like getting into some crazy hot topic news sessions of this and so and so's dating or you know strange stuff you know like shipping and all that uh stuff but like there are some groups out there who just want to have a good time and do their own uh thing and you see that more openly and uh, now some groups engaging with other groups on the dance floor at their respective tables at of course these award shows or all these groups having more so of a fun Time which we've uh, seen, you know, it's slowly but surely opened up. I wouldn't say it has fully opened up, but uh, pretty much the purpose of that, it's like people want us to act a certain way. People us want to be all pretty like and doll like and all that stuff. How the K-pop scene should be seen as, oh, it's all pretty. Everything is all glitter and rainbows, which at the end of the day, behind the scenes, it can be very dark and unfortunate. At the same uh, time, but uh, yeah, I like this about more so that message towards society as a whole and the industry. And this is what I've been saying about the Seraphim and specifically Yunjin and her songs about changing the idol industry, changing the industry houses. These are the messages that need to come across loud and clear. Like sure, rules are being set, regulations are being set. I feel like it has to be done more holistically when it comes to the government there, the industry. I know I'm getting into a rant of uh, things, but there has to be a huge reform I've got to, to say with physical, mental health, different several different topics, dieting and all that stuff. And that's thanks to society. And quite admittedly, medicines, us ourselves, I'm not saying all of us are uh, bad, but for those are the bad ones that are judging, naysaying, saying things that should be done a certain way, always wanting and being needy and all. Man, oh man, this song, that's why this song really, really cuts deep. It's not no more so it's like, I don't care about the consequences. It's like, okay, so what? There are some consequences if we don't act a certain way, do a certain thing as a K-pop group, but like, we we don't care, okay? We will suffer the consequences, learn from them, and just go on our uh, way, pretty much. So that's really cool on, on that kind of note. It should be a thing. It's like, why should they act a certain way? Why can't... Why are they so restrained in, in terms of expressing themselves, right? They can only really express themselves throughout their music, right? Mess in distress, but we still the best dressed. Love that rhyme scheme. 
Now, what what's noticeable in this is that the verses around and the post chorus in this song is more notable than the chorus, uh, quite admittedly. And this is what I said time and time again: you don't need a chorus uh, to necessarily make it catchy with the hooks and all. It could be other sections in the song. It could be a post bridge. It could be a certain kind of interlude that makes the song catchy or memorable uh, per se. And I think everything else except for the chorus does that, which is quite cool, I've got to say. Quite extraordinary. It's not okay in my rules, only I will get to decide that kind of uh, things. I like this line here by Unche, I gotta say. The rules, I get to decide what I wanna do, not these rules that are set up. So it's not like talking about rules as in like societal uh, rules of like breaking the law, but more so of like societal beliefs and what should be right, what is right and what is wrong, you know what I'm saying? So good intentions all in all. Now it gets hard in the pain if any members that's truly shining in the song, it's definitely Chewan. And all the members get a good amount of boom 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 action in this song. And then, it's very repetitive with it, and I think that could really grow on me, I gotta say. So, all in all, this song, I feel like, low-key, sure, it might not be my favorite song right off the bat, but it might end up being my, my favorite song with more listens. Well, B-side-wise, I should say. My favorite B-side over time longevity wise and quite possibly after i check out their performance of the song some samplings in that mix some sort of whistling howling sound i love that doubling that vocal layering by chewan with yunjin as well See, I'm not a doll, even if I grimace. The breathing added into the mix. Don't look at me. I want to see all the taboos surrounding me. Mm. Oh, there's that Eve reference. Just like Eve on that day, take it on the chain. I know I like that. Boom, boom, boom. I love this rush that we get with the boom boom line a lot. There's that adrenaline rush that we definitely uh, get. Now let's go right here. Some 808 claps. This ringing that's going back, that's being looped back and forth. And I think when it comes to like, you know, disobeying, there is that adrenaline, your heart booming, and you know, popping that uh, out, like that that rush that you get. Then there's this chant, this rally up moment. So very empowering as a whole for woman as well i've got to say so all in all really great uh song it makes me wonder how the other songs are gonna go of course but we do have the fan song so let's just get into that now